Welcome back to another video here at Joe Daddy's Garage. This video is the third part of a three-part series that I'm doing on the deck lid for the 68 Mustang known as Jade. Now there is a playlist for this particular series and you can go check it out. There's 20 some videos on there on that Mustang and I've done everything from installing floor pans to torque boxes to disc brake conversion, a whole bunch of different things. So if you're interested, go back and take a look at that playlist and see if something interests you. Now, in the first video of this short series, I worked on the deck lid and I applied Rage Ultra filler to some dents that were on the deck lid. And that was applied on top of a coat of epoxy primer that I put on several months ago. You know, sometimes when I do certain things, I may work on something and then step away. In this case, that deck lid has been sitting in the back shop or on actually on the Mustang for a while so that epoxy was very well dried out. I did some prep work to that and I applied the uh, Rage Ultra and then I did block sanding techniques and stuff like that. Now in the second video I showed some prep work with the spray gun which I'm using which is the Black Widow that I bought from Harbor Freight and I should go into detail in that video about that gun and setting it up and different things. And I also applied the PPG, I mean, I'm sorry, I also applied Summit epoxy primer on top of everything else. Now, that video was supposed to be the end of this series, but I ran into some problems. So I'm driving on and moving to the next phase, and that is applying this Optics Super Build. Now, this product was shipped to me from Evercoat. And I try out their stuff, and if I like it, I'm going to let you know. If I don't like it, I'm going to let you know. It's only fair. So they sent it to me, and I've used other Evercoat products that I'm very happy with. I use their products all the time. Uh, this product is intended to help you with block sanding. So you apply the product, it dries pink, and then when you block sand, it turns gray. And that way it's supposed to show you high and low spots because the pink that's left behind would show you a low spot the gray would be more high or flat. So we're going to go into some detail on this. And then when that's all said and done, I'm going to apply PPG Shopline JP202 2K High Build Primer or Primer Surfacer. So that's going to be the final part of this video series. Now there is some information in here that you need to know and as I go along and talk about it you'll find that out. But let's take a look and see how this goes. Alright, so the next thing we'll be applying the Evercoat Super Build 4 to 1 Ultra High Build Polyester Primer Surfacer. Okay, so obviously I've got the base material and the catalyst over here. Now, what I want to point out, I was looking over the instructions for the on the data sheet and just glancing over it pretty quick, it tells you it's a hybrid polyester epoxy polyester epoxy wait a minute epoxy primer surfacer wait a minute so let's go a little further note it says it right here in our instructions an epoxy pre-coat is not required for ever coat 4 to 1 polyester primers if a minimum of two coats with a dry film thickness of 4.5 4 to 6 mils are applied to achieve proper protection so apparently what this is telling us is I could have went straight to bare metal with this. That's something different. I didn't even think about that. I didn't go, you know, I went by the old standard, put epoxy on, and I'm still okay with that. It just says you didn't have to do it. So, anyway. And yeah, goes into detail. Do not apply over self-etched primers. Okay. Acidic coatings or after the use of acidic prep wipes, as these materials can inhibit the curing process of polyester primers. That's good to know. Um, talks about, you know, clean. You can, uh, you know, sand and prep the area. And then, you know, different finish uh, sanding body filler putty with 180 to 220 grit sandpaper. And feather edge, you know, that sort of thing. And then back here, it's saying mixing 4 to 1. Application, apply 2 to 3 medium wet coats at a distance of 8 to 10 inches allowing 5 to 10 minutes splash time between coats. 
spray at gun manufacturers recommended recommended air pressure and then ready to sand in two hours okay now it also tells you that you can if you have the capability you can kind of force you know make it force dry um, this is the I don't know what you'd call it the insert that they might give to a paint store so that they can look at it and tells you about the different options of materials that they have so you've got a a build, fiber fill, finish sand, and feather fill, and suit, uh, slick sand. So just, you know, Evercoat products. Back here, you know, as I showed before, it talks about how you can spray this. And when you sand it, this isn't about adding guide coat. You know, this is about a color changing primer after when you start sanding. So I think there was a picture where did I see that at? Yeah. So in this picture, it shows you initial sand, high spots, low spots. Fully sanded, low spots. So supposedly, you're going to get something that looks like that to let you see where the low spots are. Now, I did, uh, I'll, I'll say this ahead of time, before I even spray this, I've already set up the uh, deck lid to have problems. I wanted to see how well this worked, so I left some dents and some imperfections in that deck lid on purpose. And because what's the point if I um, have a perfectly flat deck lid and I apply this stuff, we can't tell exactly how it's going to work. So anyway, the next step will be applying this. Now I'm going to let the um, epoxy dry. It says on the summit. Uh, sheet here on the on the back of the can it says it has to dry uh, it may be top coated after 30 minutes or after 60 minutes if extra coats of epoxy have been applied may be top coated for several days without prior sanding after four days epoxy must be sanded prior to top coating okay so I'm gonna let this cure at least 60 minutes before I put this stuff on. So I left this sit overnight because I didn't want to try the one hour thing. I didn't think that was enough time in my opinion. So this is sat overnight. Has a nice little sheen to it. And I think it's going to be just fine. Now I will point out I've already gone over this a little bit. I've taken just a little bit of sandpaper and scuffed up some areas where there was a little bit of trash and there was a spot back here or I think there was an eyelash <laughs> right there so I kind of just knocked that down a little bit so I'll wipe this down again and you know blow it dry and um, then I may go over it again with the tack cloth I don't know if I really need to but I'll get it ready and uh, once I mix up the primer I'll come back in here and spray this all right I wanted to show you that the epoxy I mixed up a one to one ratio and I used the uh, what would be the four on the one to one basically I ended up I have almost half of what I started with left over so you know just may help you with a reference point I don't know just wanted to mention that now I want to mix up the uh, Evercoat super build so this is you know highlighted with four to one it says it right on a can and the um, catalyst so if I go to my scale on my other cup here and it's got a four to one scale and I don't want to mix up as much as I did with the epoxy because it'll go to waste so what I'll probably do is go in the range of this first number four here and then a one is just a little jump up so four to one that'll give me about the same amount that I had in the other cup. I don't know how bad this stuff is going to smell. I'm sure, you know, for safe practices, I'm going to put a respirator on and I'll go ahead and mix this. I will point out that this whole system, if I haven't said it before, is available on my Amazon page. I really like these things. And uh, I'm going to put a fresh liner in the new cup, have my lid ready, and I'm going to put my respirator on and mix up this primer.
Whoa, 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 whoa. Time out. Time out. Stop the presses. There are issues. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what those are in just a second. Whew. That didn't go the way I planned. Sorry. Sorry. It just didn't happen. I try to show everything that's going on with these projects and if something doesn't work I want you to see that too because you need to know you know if you're gonna be trying this stuff you need to see that there are chances something won't go right in this case this did not go right and I'm gonna show you I did get the, the panel covered but as you can see in the segment you know I could not get a spray pattern I could not get the flow that I needed I could not it just it just wasn't working and I was thinking why you know as I'm playing with it I thought why is this not working well, I, I managed to get the panel covered, and it's not anywhere near smooth like I would want it to be, but the, it is what it is at this point. Now, the base material and a catalyst together, four to one, that's a chemical reaction. It's going to do something. And then the other side that I didn't pay attention to or didn't notice until after I sprayed and came back in here to clean up things was the it requires a 2.0 tip and I don't have that I have a 1.7 in fact I looked through my I was in I looked through my other guns here in my cheap little um, purple gun I think from Harbor Freight I don't even think it's it might be a 1.8 so the point being I did not follow the instructions that are on the can now had it, had I tried the 2.0 and it sprayed great, that'd be one thing. But I sprayed it with a 1.7, and I think that was the bulk of the problem because it just would not let it flow like it should. So make note of that. If you're going to try this, follow the directions. <laughs> but um, anyway, so now you know or now you can see what uh, how, or how the effect is. So at least you can learn something and I can learn something from the same thing. Now... Beyond that, I don't have it. Like I said, I don't have a 2.0 gun, and I don't know that I want to go buy a 2.0 or a, or a, I might be able to buy a tip for this or nozzle, whatever, for the uh, Black Widow somewhere. I don't know. I checked at Harbor Freight; they don't carry any different sizes. I'm sure somebody does, but I didn't research it very hard. So if I'm going to continue to try to use this stuff, I need to, you know, expand my equipment a little bit. Now, I will point out that this stuff. It has a similar smell to it, to materials that we use at the body shop, and one of those is slick sand. And so it, it reminds me of that, that it's, it's kind of like a slick sand. It's meant to go on, you know, I guess fairly thick, but you want it to flow, and it just, it's not going to flow with a 1.7. So just know that. And I'm going to show you the panel. It's covered, you know, and then I'm going to let it sit. It says you can work it in about, you know, two hours, you can start sanding. Um, I'm not sure exactly how long I'm going to wait. I may go longer than that just to make sure it's you know hardened up pretty good. But let me show you the panel. So I don't know how much you can tell, but it is pink. You know, it's definitely not any other color but pink. But it's it's kind of a dull pink, and you can hear that. It's got some texture to it. You're not going to see that on a camera. And I also noticed, you know, whenever I, I finish spraying. I came in here to the, to clean up the gun and I had a panic attack because I started trying to clean it, you know, put some lacquer thinner in it. And normally when I have paint in the uh, you know, in the gun and I put lacquer thinner in the top and I squeeze the trigger, it'll, you know, just kind of trickle out and kind of clean it out a little bit before I start, you know, brushing things. When I did it with this stuff, I squeezed the trigger, nothing happened. And I thought, "Oh, that's not good." So I ended up trying to take the brush and going into the you know the little cavity where um, the PPS cup connects on, which everything's in this bowl right now. Let's see if I can get that open one-handed. And everything's in there, but it was um, it was not coming off. It was just really not coming off. And so, like I said, I kind of panicked. And took everything apart as fast as I could and just kept scrubbing and scrubbing and scrubbing and adding thinner and 
you know, trying to get all of the pieces clean because, you know, this this isn't, we'll say, not an expensive gun, but, you know, for somebody just doing it at home, it's still an expensive gun. I mean, on sale, I got this for 150 They normally sell them for like $200. Um, but, you know, it's not saying I'm going to use it one time and throw it away, that's for sure. So, I, I think I got it pretty cleaned out, but, man, it took some effort. I was, I was really kind of panicking. And um, hopefully it didn't mess the gun up, but we'll find that out later. So anyway, I'm going to drive on with this. And I will do, you know, a sanding segment on this to see how it turns out. And uh, we'll see how that goes from there. I may end up going back and just using my regular 2K high build from um, PPG. And just see, you know, what that does on top of this. But I don't think it would be an issue because, this is again, this is a, a polyester, you know, resin type material. So, anyway, we'll find out. Alright, so this has become kind of an experiment phase for me right now. I don't know how this stuff is going to do, but I want to see if it does the color change thing. And so I'm going to use the three different air tools and see what responds, you know, or how this responds to those different uh, air tools. So I've got my DA with 80 grit on it. Sorry, I'll put one, I'll put 80 grit on it. This is 180. I'll put 80 grit. And then I have the Baxter air file with 80 grit. And then I also will use the DuraBlock. You know, this would be my normal block sanding, and I'll use 100 grit with that. So, and this is Merca, by the way. I'm not sure. You know, it still has that pink on the back, which is where I did not sand at all. And you can see that it turned gray. Hopefully you can see the difference. But, I don't know. I mean, it may work. It may, it may not. You can see different color, different textures. And I'm not done. I'm just kind of trying to go over it now. You know, this is this is high, obviously, because it went right to it. And I will say I didn't get probably as much material on here as I wanted because of the gun functions. And I knew there was a high spot right there. And I knew that was going to take a hammer and dolly to knock that down. Another one starting right there. So what I'm going to do 
is I'm gonna go over the whole thing with the the um, dura block because I already know I I have an area there's a dent right here that I left and I did that so that I could see if this was gonna leave it look like pink but going over with the DA it just kind of went right into it so you really can't see the color difference um, I mean you can see a little but I need to go over it with the block and see if I can't get better results okay so I've gone over the whole thing with the 100 grit and the dura block and honestly color change yeah sort of I mean that's the pink that it sprayed out and gray now I can tell you right now this is a deep enough dent right here that it probably needs a skim coat of filler and I, I like I said I left that there to showcase this I can't I really can't endorse this I mean I'm getting the same effect in essence because of seeing the breakthrough where the epoxy was you know that's telling me high spots and just the regular color now you can if with the right enough light I guess maybe you can see pink you know kind of I don't know not not real enthused about this product but we'll see what I can do I'm probably going to sand all this back edge get it prepped and then come back and top coat this with the um, PPG 2K high build primer and go from there because um, this really isn't doing what I wanted to now the only problem that I've had is the application you know I didn't use the right size uh, tip like I said so but I don't think that should affect the color change I mean obviously it's pink here and it's you know gray with subtle I don't know anyway so I'm gonna have to uh, do some more work on this and get it ready and then I'll reprime it and show you that process and then uh, the end results so as you can see I put some filler over that low spot and I'm just gonna block sand it out You might be able to see the color change starting right here. Now that I'm at this point, since I'm not going to be adding any more of the pink material, I'm going to take some 180 grit and basically go over the whole thing and try to smooth out some of the scratches. I don't want to go too far, but I want to smooth it up some in preparation for putting on the PPG 2K high build. Alright, so I'm going to spray that panel with some Shopline JP202. This is from PPG. I've used it before and I'm very happy with it. I'm going to add some hardener to it and some reducer. Now the instructions point out on the can even it says right here, your normal mix is 4 to 1, but you can go 4 to 1 to 1, which means you can add up to one uh, mix of reducer. Well, I'm going to mix this up with four to one to one half 
because I just I, I don't want it as thin as it could be. I'm going to make it just a just a little bit thicker. And I wanted to point out a couple things with this product. I also have the you know the data sheet from Shopline right here, and it says two to four coats, HVLP, 10 psi at the air cap, 10, 40 to 50 40 to 50 psi at the gun. That's how I'm setting it up. Gun setup, 1.6 to 1.8 millimeter. Well, that Black Widow is 1.7, so we're dead on the money with that. Dry times, 5 to 10 minutes between coats. Air dry gives you the numbers, whatever. And then force dry and infrared. Well, I'm not going to be doing any of that. Down here's the ratios. I don't know if you can see that clearly or not, but it gives you the mix, you know, 4 to 1. And then again, four to one to one with the uh, reducer. So, and there it even says the JR reducer may be reduced to a one half part, which is what I just, what I, which is what I plan to do. So, I'm going to mix this up. I'm not going to show you that because you've already seen me do that. It's, you know, you can do that. And I think that's it. So, let me get it mixed up and spray that panel. Oh, one little thing. Here's a tip for you get one of these this is a little nozzle that you can thread onto your can and then you can tilt it over and just squeeze you know kind of squeeze it and get out the portion that you want without it trying to dump it so get one All right, so I thought I would just kind of show you this panel. Obviously, you're not going to see much in the way of imperfections or flaws. Can't really get the light shine across it, you know. But I think it looks pretty good. I don't see any bubbling or issues. I'm, I'm sure that the uh, Evercoat products that I applied, the pink stuff, has no effect on it. Um, I did want to point out and I, I'll show it in the. I showed it earlier on the data sheet that I have for the 2K. Uh, when I was sanding this, the only area that I broke through in the bare metal is right here, just a little bit. Everything else was fine, and it points out in the instructions that you can spray over etch primer, and that is what I did. I just shot a little bit of etch on this edge, like you probably saw it in the video, just a little bit on this edge, and that's it. So, yep. Yeah. Alright, so this is going to be the end of this video. I went over a bunch of different things. I talked about the Rage Ultra that I use for body filler. I talked about the epoxy primer that I bought from Summit. And I've talked about this JP202 that I have from PPG. And I also talked about, and that was the whole point of this video from the start, was the Evercoat product. Now, I'm going to say this. This is probably a great product. 
probably used correctly with the right equipment, it'll do a great job. I trust Evercoat. I know they make great products. I've used them for years and I have no regrets over using any of their products. However, I can't come out and say, go buy this. I just can't. Um, you know, I know they send me these samples and I hate to say it, but I'm going to give my opinion. This isn't necessarily a good product for the home builder. You know, you have to have the right spray gun, um, the right environment, and you know, it's, it's waterborne paint compatible so that most home builders aren't going to have a waterborne system. And um, you know, I, I like the idea, I like the concept, but I didn't really see the results that I thought I should get. You know, I expected a more of a dramatic change in colors. And maybe I didn't do it right. You know, maybe, maybe that's my fault for not, you know, following the directions. I, I don't know. I, all I can say is I'm, I'm, I'm not going to recommend this for the average home builder. Now, a, a big time shop, yeah. I mean, they'll probably use it and have good luck with it. But, uh, I, sorry, I'm going to be honest. You know, if I'm not honest with you, then you can't value my uh, opinions or suggestions or ideas. So that's just part of it. So I hope that, I hope Evercoat's not mad, <laughs> but that's just how it is. Now, the other thing that I used was the Black Widow spray gun from Harbor Freight. Again, dealing with the Evercoat product, this was the wrong choice. You know, it should have been a 2.0 tip and you know, that, that's probably part of the problem is, you know, the tip was the wrong size and uh, just didn't do what it was, you know, maybe it was supposed to do as well. Um, for everything else, this thing worked great. I mean, really, I, I like it a lot. Um, I forget who it's copied after. I don't know if it's a SATA gun or whatever, but, you know, for the home, the home guy, I, I'll put a recommendation for this. You know, I, I don't get any kickback from Harbor Freight, I, I, you know. So this one I want you to trust me on. I like it. Um, as always, I have pushed the Evercoat Rage Ultra. You know, uh, I don't have any deals with Summit, as I said in the beginning of the video. So um, this is a true personal recommendation. You know, hey, use it. And again, the PPG, it's what I use. And it's what we used at the Body Shop for years. I have no complaints over it. I love PPG products. I've had great luck with them over the years and you know I'll continue to use them. Um, PPS cups, as I said before, you know, this whole assembly available on Amazon. You know, if you want to use it, there's links to my on my page uh, or on the description that'll say, hey, down below, click on the link, and you'll see um, uh, it'll take you to my Amazon page and then you just follow things around. Also, same way with the clean sheets. I love these things. So, um, other than that, I have one more thing to do. Now, as I said in the first video for this setup, uh, I was going to give away this t-shirt. And I'm still going to give away this t-shirt. You know, it's a nice shirt. It's a heavy, heavy shirt. It's a Hanes Comfort Soft Heavyweight Large. Alright? So, this can be yours. And I'll even leave... I'll even leave the, the dust on it from the shop. <laughs> I don't know if that makes it worth it anymore or not, but <laughs> I'll leave it on it. You'll get it dusty, just like it is. Okay? So, um, if you're interested in the shirt, it's a large, okay? If you're interested in the shirt, just leave, leave a response. Just say, you know, you can leave a comment on the video, what you think about it, whether it's a good video or not, whatever. And then, if you want the shirt, I don't know, put something. Say, sign me up. There you go. How about that? Sign me up for the shirt. Something like that. And then, uh, I'll do a drawing next week and give the shirt away to some lucky winner. Okay. A couple of the things I want to address or take care of. Um, I've been doing the live videos on Monday nights now. I did one last, two weeks ago I did it on Tuesday and this past week I did it on Monday and I think I'm gonna to try to continue to do it on Mondays 
got great response from that. You know, it kind of turns into a question answer session, and, um, and that's fine. I don't mind answering questions. I don't mind talking to people, and uh, so I'm going to keep doing that. I'm still going to push to do the, you know, try to get one video out. I announced this on the video or the live stream last week or this past Monday that I, I'm going to try to put out one video a week now. I know that people want more videos, so I'm going to try my best to do that. And it was one other thing I wanted to mention. Oh yeah the viewers projects that has been great I've gotten some great responses from that already and I already have people submitting uh, videos so there'll be you know more details under I post the next one and uh, you know you can check that out the next video will be Wally's 68 Mustang convertible pretty good video yeah that's it that's all I got to say Hope you enjoyed the video. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you stayed to watch all the way to the end. I hope that you can find some information that was helpful, useful, practical, whatever. You know, because if we don't share knowledge like this, you're stuck in a, in a rut or, you know, fall in a hole and you can't get out. So I don't want that. I want you to have the knowledge and use it. So if you would, hit the like button, you know, hit the bell, subscribe. You know, all those little things that are down in that corner, I guess. Whatever. And um, I look forward to making more videos throughout the year. And we'll see how that goes. <laughs> so, uh, until next time, take care of yourselves. Alright, so the next thing will we'll be... You can also system whatever we call them PPS cups, and you can look, or I should say F FPS. No.